Can you imagine an agriculture of the future that mitigates climate change and promotes fairness and well-being for farmers? I would like to share something with you that sustainably affected my life. Globally, we differentiate between two main agriculture systems. One is the conventional agriculture, the second, the regenerative or organic agriculture. Both systems have a direct or indirect impact on us, whether we know it or not. The regenerative agriculture is mainly focusing on a holistic approach, focusing on soil health, the promotion of biodiversity habitats, and to create an ecological balance on the farm in order to produce organic and healthy products. The conventional system is uh, mainly focusing on mass production and therefore also heavily relying on synthetic farm inputs such as fertilizer, herbicides and pesticides in order to artificially increase the yield. Luckily, my grandparents have one of the oldest organic farm in northern Germany, so I partly grew up on this farm and I was very connected since uh, my childhood to the nature and to the principles of organic agriculture as well. And when I realized, when I learned that 98% of our global food system today is coming from conventional agriculture, uh, I had the need and I wanted to explore how this conventional system looks like. So I decided to apply on working for a farm a conventional industrialized farm in Australia. And working on this farm for several months has really changed my life fundamentally because I became part of an intensive disruption of natural ecosystems and through my work thousands of acres got burned down and thousands of acres got sprayed dead. And when I looked at this dead soil, I asked myself, how can we promote this, how can we promote a system that is largely responsible for today's climate change and in the same time is supposed to produce food for future generations and for our today's society? And when I found out that Agriculture today is responsible for 18% of the global greenhouse gas emissions, some sources even say over 20%, and that agriculture also is responsible for 88% of today's pollution of ri rivers and streams. I was quite shocked. And in addition to that, I learned that biodiversity loss that we are facing currently is also largely responsible um, and caused by the conventional agriculture. And here, this, uh, the biodiversity loss is mainly visible in the decline of wildlife, but also in the loss of food seeds, which in the end makes our systems less resilient to pests and diseases and other climate change events. And when we see that over 40% of today's insects are in decline and threatened, we might think, or we tend to think that uh, biodiversity loss does not really affect us, right? We live here in, in the cities, in Cairo. How, how should this affect us? Maybe except on having less insects on our windshield while driving on the, on the highway uh, compared to 30 years ago. But if we continue like that, we might not be behind the steering wheel after the next 30 years because 35% of our global food supply today is heavily dependent on those insects. Now, if we compare the conventional agriculture system with the regenerative, we quickly realize that the regenerative agriculture provides a huge ecosystem service to society, which is at the moment not being taken into, into account and not being valued. And through my work in this field, I realized that the regenerative system can only be scaled if we are able to provide a financial benefit to the farmers and to the communities on the ground that do the work. 
And besides supporting Egyptian farmers of producing healthy food for the society, we have started to measure and incentivize farmers for their ecosystem services. And this is mainly um, happening through that we measure how much carbon, how much CO2 can be stored in the trees that are surrounding regenerative farms. It also is about how much carbon, how much CO2 we can sequester in the soil through crop rotation, cover crops, or other regenerative practices. We also take into account the compost that is produced on the farm, because by producing compost, we can avoid a lot of methane emissions and can take this into the equation. And if we are installing renewable energies on the farms, of course, this enables us as well to decrease the carbon emission because we are not dependent anymore on the irrigation pumps, the diesel pumps that we need for irrigation. So along the way, I realized that agriculture can either be a powerful carbon sink or one of the biggest emitter. And if we now look to the Egyptian context, we see that the conventional agriculture here in Egypt is emitting from the is emitting CO2 to the atmosphere, two to five tons of CO2 per acre per year, whereas the regenerative system has the potential to sequester and avoid up to 11 tons of CO2 per acre per year. And if we see those numbers, we can clearly say that agriculture has a great potential of mitigating climate change, right? And actually, in the end, the farmers on the ground should be appreciated for, for the services that they are doing. And now, a lot of farmers and a lot of um, people already around the world are applying regenerative agriculture and, and uh, organic agriculture, but they are not being incentivized for their services. But today, we are using new methodologies by IPCC and UNFCCC to really measure the performance that our farmers are providing on the ground. And currently, we are working with around 3,000 farmers in Egypt and scaling up to 40,000 farmers within the next two years. But now imagine if all Egyptian farmers would apply regenerative agriculture, we would have a potential of sequestering and avoiding up to 100 million tons of CO2, which is around one third of Egypt's total emissions today. Isn't that great? And actually the value of those 100 million tons is around 3.5 billion euros, which is today 110, around 110 billion Egyptian pounds considering that we are currently selling one ton of CO2 for 35 euros per ton on the voluntary carbon market. If we look to the regulated market, for example, in Europe, we see that the price just hit 100 per ton. So we see there's a clear trend uh, of increasing prices. And so this system really has the potential and is enabling us to reach a tipping point where we can support many more farmers to convert their practices into regenerative farming simply because it's a good business case. And in the end, we want the farmers to produce healthy products. And with our system, this can be done even to a competitive price. And our goal is to make healthy organic products available for everyone, not just for the elite. So the farmers working with our system is are, are in the end um, able to lower their prices of their organic products to a conventional level because they are not any more dependent on the premium prices that they got for the organic products. Through the additional income of carbon credits, they can lower their prices and they can still earn more money with uh, the carbon credits and increase their livelihoods and well-being. Thank you.